Right. That man doing what he got to do, and I'm going to do what I got to do. You know what right. I'm saying? Right. Plain and simple. When we see each other, we going to see each other. Until then, I'm going to make good music, and he going to make whatever he make. You know what I'm saying? and let the nigga come on before I do keep your head up and get around. Because nobody knew the nigga in New York. Last night, just after midnight, at 723 7th Avenue, that's between 48th and 49th Street, our rap star Tupac Shakur and three members of his group were robbed and shot. The word on the streets is that it was a warning to Tupac. Who was it coming from? In a bizarre twist of events, rap singer Tupac Shakur checked himself out of Bellevue Hospital late Wednesday night after the 23-year-old was shot five times early that same morning inside the lobby of a Times Square recording studio. Shakur had appeared in court today but had little to say about being shot. And I was there visiting him and it's a shame that he got shot and we didn't have anything to do with it. Suge Knight saw an opportunity, bailed Tupac out of jail, and immediately signed him to death row. With Bad Boy as a common enemy and Tupac riding the crest of a quintuple platinum double album, the feud reached bold new lows. Besides threatening Biggie's life, and that of everyone, fans included, who's down with Bad Boy Records, Tupac also claimed to be sleeping with Mrs. Biggie, singer Faith Evans. I faith my home girl. I just want to send a shout out to Faith. <laughs> hey girl, hey, and Bad Boy Records. That's for Bad Boy Records, I love y'all. Right now I can say that there is a problem, you know what I'm saying? And it's a shame that it has to be that way. There's still no end in sight to the death row bad boy feud. Loving how I got you niggas crazy. Nigga, forget all lies. Open my dub, I'm so fuck us, no. This is the realest shit I ever wrote. Nigga, forget all lies. I'm in the studio getting blown. This is the truest shit I ever spoke. Forget all lies. Open my true motherfuckers, no. This is the realest shit I ever wrote. I heard he was light skin stock with a Haitian accent. Jewelry fast cars and known for flashing. Listen while I take pictures. Back in late, this rap, a real live tale about a snitch named Haitian Jack. Knew he was working for the feds. Same crime, took the trials, nigga, picture what he said. And did I mention? Promise to pay back to the henchmen. In due time, I knew you bitch niggas is listening. The world is mine. Set me up, wrap me up, nigga, stuck me up. Heard your guns bust, but you tricks never shut me up. It has been nearly 15 years since Tupac Shakur was shot and robbed outside of Manhattan's Quad Studios. But the controversy surrounding that attack rages on today. Although no one has ever officially been fingered in the New York shooting, Pulitzer Prize winning writer Chuck Phillips recently claimed in an LA Times article that Diddy and the notorious B.I.G. were aware of a plot masterminded by Czar Entertainment co-founder Jimmy Roseman, also known as Jimmy Henchman. Last week, Phillips admitted that he'd been duped that the story was based on false FBI documents forged by a known felon, James Sabatino, who also was a key target in Phillips' report. Well, now we've gone straight to the source to find out from Jimmy Rosemond himself what he saw on the night in 1994 when Tupac was shot. I lived with the rumor of what happened to Tupac for, for the last 14 years. And I think what, what happens is that rumors are rumors. You know, you either believe them or you don't. But I think when you have a reputable newspaper like the Los Angeles Times with a Polit Pulitzer Prize winner like Chuck Phillips to validate a rumor, then it becomes real. Me and Tupac was pretty much friends. Um, we were good friends to a certain extent. So people in their mind, when they hear the story, they, don't, they think that, you know, it was just a bunch of guys, including me, trying to summons Tupac to the studio for no reason on some hangout stuff. But it, it was all business. Trackmasters was there. Mm -hmm. Puffy had came down to say hi to me and Andre Harrell. It was about 15 people there. Did you or did you not have anything to do with him being robbed or shot at Choir Studios in 1994? Absolutely never even knew about it, never heard about it before, afterwards, had nothing to do with it. Nobody that I know, associated with, they can dig up whatever they want to dig up. And I've been very firm in what I've said to people, is that I had nothing to do with it. 
According to crime scene reports, Tupac was shot at Quav Studios by two men wearing army fatigues. Tupac later accused Diddy, Biggie, and their associates of setting him up. However, over the years, details of the story have become obscured, and now no one quite knows how the events of the evening unfolded. I mean, it's hard for me to assess it only because there's so much rumors out there. There's so much guys who, you know, take the blame for things that they don't, they haven't really done. And maybe some of them have. It isn't for me to really try to figure that out. Mm -hmm. You know, I have my own theories in my head of what happened that night, only because when we, when Pac came out the elevator, he was conscious, he was talking, he was rolling up a, some weed, you know, he said a few things. I didn't see five sh bullet holes in Tupac as reported. It, it, you can ask Andre Harrell and all of these people that was there. There was over 15 people there. Why come nobody ever came up from Tupac's camp and said, Pac has told me that Jimmy did this? Why, why haven't these guys been interviewed? These are the guys who's lived with Pac. So I'm hoping that now that we've been able to just push these web, webs uh, aside and show how flimsy these rumors are, that I can go on with my career, that I could really put this behind me and nobody else don't have to ask me about Tupac Shakur. I, I'm praying that he can, he can rest in peace. I was more in the mind frame of keep your mouth shut, big. You know what I'm saying? Just don't feed into it. If you feed into it, it's gonna do nothing but escalate. You know what I'm saying? I knew it wasn't true. Well, at least what I knew I was getting blamed for wasn't true. I can't speak for nothing else. You know, I wasn't there. But I know what he was blaming me for wasn't true. So it don't make no sense me sitting there trying to make records or hit magazines and TVs screaming how it ain't true. You know what I'm saying? If it ain't true, I just got to ig it. And he told me, like, about a week before I got shot, he knew the nigga that was shot me. He was like, Pop, don't hang around this nigga. You know what I mean? We walked in with the nigga that shot me. They ended up shooting me. He's like, Pop, don't fuck with this nigga because I knew the nigga too. He was my Cody fan. And uh, I was like, what you mean? He's like, I'll talk to you about it later. And we didn't talk. And the next time I saw him was in the studio where I got shot. So I knew he knew what happened. So I was like, Biggie, what happened? He kept sending me messages like a bitch, you know, like I'm gonna come see. No, nigga, what happened? While I'm in jail, strangers is telling me, yo, you don't know. Biggie homeboy shot you. Cause they bragging, they telling they niggas in jail, yo, we just got pop. And my cousin was in jail in New York, cause I got family out there. He sit right there while the niggas get the call going, yo, my homeboys just jacked that nigga Tupac. So that's how I knew who shot me, what happened, and everything. It was never a beef. It's only a difference in opinion. Right. To me, if I like my, my homeboy Sugar gave me the best advice I could ever get from anybody. He said, he's when people ask him if he's beefing with um, bad boy with Puffy, he says like me going to a playground and picking on a little kid. Right. That's like me being mad at my little brother because he getting cash now. I'm not mad at that. I'm just mad at my little brother when he don't respect me. Yeah. Now, when you don't respect me, I'm going to spank your ass. I don't give a fuck how rich you got on the block. I'm your big brother. I will break your big ass down. And that's my, that's only, that's my only point. And I feel as though he wronged me. You got out of hand and you wronged me. You got seduced by the power. Not because he's an evil person, yeah. but because money is evil if it's not handled right. Mm -hmm. If you lose your composure, you can do anything. And he, he fear got stronger than love. And niggas did things that they know they weren't supposed to do. They know in their heart. That's why they in hell now. Right. They can't sleep. That's why they telling all of the reporters and all the people, why are they doing this? They fucking up hip hop. Because they in hell. They can't make money. They can't go anywhere. They can't look at themselves. Because they know the 
prodigal son has returned. I'm alive. The ghost is walking around. You know what I mean? And I'm alive talking. In jail, I didn't talk. I made peace. Now, everybody thinks that I disrespected or I love, I love my East Coast fans. I'm from there. I'm eating New York pizza. I drive New York Jeeps. I want to hear New York. But I'm saying let's keep it real for a second. If you have the love of music that you are, study. Go back and study. Study how party and bullshit was me before I met Biggie. You don't hear my style in this rap. Study how after I met Biggie, Ready to Die come out, his whole style changed. Study. Study why I would be mad. Study why I be, would be mad when half of New York, half of the major New York rappers, or they, or they managers, or they agents, or they somebody mm -hmm. was there when I got shot. And nobody couldn't give me no information. Just study that. Study how when Wu-Tang got their chain snatched at 6'6 six, six Deuce, I not only found who did it, right. but gave them the message that if they want to see the niggas that did it, they can see them. Man to man. Just you and them. Right. No guns, no nothing. If you feel like that, that's all I ask for. That's all I ask for. If you're gonna act like you a gangster or a G or the king of New York, I'm expect that. And when you don't come through, then I'm gonna wanna crush your empire. And that's what it's time for. Um, so do you think Puffy was involved in the shooting? Only they can answer that question. Right. I have my own opinion, but I wouldn't slander their name like they did mine. Right. I wouldn't say things that I knew, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I believe so. I do believe so. I have proof things that I could say that would back up my claim, but this is not for the world to know about. You know what I mean? It's between me and him, and only he knows. So every time he say it didn't happen, or duh, 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 that's the only thing that makes this become an issue to everybody. Because I read, I, I, you see what I said in the Vibe article. I basically bowed out and was going to go ahead about my life. The next issue, that, no, it wasn't even the next issue, because them cowards waited about four issues before they got their story together. Four issues later, half of New York is commenting on me getting shot. And before, they was all like, we didn't see nothing. In the first issue, read it, Vibe viewers. Nobody seen shit. Tupac brought the feeling of I was nothing, now I'm something, and I want everybody else to be something too. If I could do it, you can do it.